Hey guys, so in this video we'll be covering all the new features of the Sony Xperia XE and Judit Oreo update and we'll also be doing a full speed test comparison versus Sony Xperia XES. Alright guys, so next up we're going to do a speed test comparison to boot up between the XE and 7 Nougat, of course that's a video I filmed, the XE and Android 8 Oreo and the XES and the XE1 and Android 8 Oreo. Now the XE1 uh, of course has a Snapdragon 835 so it should be the fastest booting up. And right after the boot up, we'll do a full speed test comparison between the XE and the XES. Three, two, one, go. So on the XE1, Snapdragon 835, 4GB RAM. Uh, Sony actually had three phones with the Snapdragon 20. These are two of them. The other one was the X Performance. And 4GB RAM on the XES, 3 on the XE. XE1, unsurprisingly, the first one to boot up. XES, XE on Oreo. So a nice improvement there for the XE, uh, I think about four or five seconds faster there. Okay, so next we're gonna do a quick speed test comparison between the XE and the XES. And right after this, we'll go over the new features of Android Oreo on the XE. So first up, we have iFunny. XES, NBC News. XES again. You do. Now, as I mentioned, Sony, they made three phones all of the Snapdragon, uh, Snapdragon 20, which I think is a bit unnecessary. But you guys see this one going to the XES as well. The XES clearly better in performance over the XE, although both of them are a huge step up from the X. Uh, uh, both of them are huge step up from the X performance in terms of performance. So even for some of these basic apps, you guys see an advantage here for the XES. And I think overall the XES is just a better optimized phone. Uh, I mean, it does have one additional gigabyte of RAM, but that really shouldn't make a big difference here just in terms of opening up the apps. Now we get to the multitask in a second, that will make more of a difference and you guys will definitely see that, but just in terms of this part, the app opening, it shouldn't make a big difference, uh, which is why I think the XES is just a better optimized phone than the XE. Okay, so a few more and then we'll get to the multitasking settings. So yeah, basic app settings is faster on the XES, CBS Sports. If you're in the market for one of these phones, I would definitely recommend the XES unless there's a huge price difference between them. Obviously the XES is newer, uh, but just in terms of the camera, the speed, I think it's a pretty big difference. Yeah, so even for Temple Run 2, you're going to see a difference of about 2-3 seconds here. And I do think for the XES, I wish that they came out with the Snapdragon 21 for it, but at the time I think they were more concerned with the XE1 with the Snapdragon 35. And of course the XE1 came out. Uh, it was pretty close after the XES release, I think about three, four months afterwards. So that's why the XES is kind of an odd phone. Uh, I think that Sony did a bit too much releasing it. Again, I don't think it was necessary to release four phones in basically the course of one year. Okay, so that's actually just a problem with the website not loading up, but not a problem with the phone itself. Cam app. Okay, now for the multitasking, you should see a bigger difference here. Hi, funny. Completely restarting on the XE, but you guys see already up on the XES.
Now, Sony's upcoming flagships will have 60 bytes of RAM, which uh, I'm pretty excited about because as you guys see, just going from three to four, it makes a huge, huge difference. You do? And I will say it's uh, phones, they do slow down over time, but I don't, I think it really has to do with the optimizations of the XE versus the XES. I, I don't think that the XE could have slowed down this much. And it's just about six months older. The XES is just about six months newer than the XE. But pretty much all these apps restarted on the XE. Now for some of them it may not uh, may not make big difference, but for Asphalt 8, you guys see this is gonna be about the, probably about a 10, 20 second difference here. Okay, so a few more, we'll do a camera test, uh, camera speed test, and then uh, right after that, we'll go over the new features on Android 8 Oreo on the XE. But I think by this point, you guys pretty much get the point. Dumperanto. Once again, another game that is restarting on the XE, but not on the XES. You guys could have already been playing a few rounds here of Temper on Tail, just waiting for it. And to do. Chrome. And final one, let's go back into that camera app. Now the camera on the XE actually is a bit faster. Although the XES camera is more advanced. So now for the Android 8 Oreo update on the XE, and unfortunately it is missing some features that phones like the XE Premium, the XE One, the XE One Compact do have. So for example, you do not have autofocus, uh, autofocus burst on the XE. And also you do have the old style camera interface here. So as you guys see, we have the 4K resolution right here, it's its own app. But if I show you the XE Premium, for example, this right here is new camera interface. So if you're on a video resolution, as you guys see right here, 4K mode, and you do not have the 4K app for this. Uh, also on the XC, unfortunately, you do not have the 3D Creator app. And honestly guys, I did do like a full video review on it. I think it's pretty overrated. Uh, I mean, it's cool that Sony's doing it. It's nice that they're adding in this new feature, but uh, mm -hmm. I think for most people, it's probably not gonna be practical to use it. But if you do want to see what I'm talking about, press in the top right corner to see what the app is all about. And also something interesting, on the XES you do have correction for image distortion, but on the XE you do not. And I think that's because there are different camera, uh, camera lenses, so it's not necessary for that fix on the XE. And also another thing that the XES does have that the XE does not is predictive capture. Uh, so this is basically, uh, basically what the phone does is it buffers right before you take a picture and then it's kind of similar to Vive Photos on iPhone, if you guys know that. So it actually explains why it's faster taking pictures on the XES versus the XE, because I do a predictive capture enabled for the XES. And now we'll get to the features that the XE does have. So one of them is notification dots, and as you guys see in the clock, uh, for the clock there in the top right corner, there's a blue dot. So basically, if there's notification, then you can hold down on it. And as you guys see, there's some options right there. So this notification is because I have an alarm set for two minutes from now. Also, if you swipe from left to right like this, then you have a clock option right here, which will snooze the notification. Also, the battery is supposed to be improved on this, and uh, I have not used enough to actually know if that's true. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about that, if you think it's true or not. There's also Xperia Actions, which is most used for gaming. And you guys can go into the settings and turn this on if you want to. So this for example, if you want to put do not disturb mode on, every night at 1 a.m. will do that. There's also picture in picture mode. So for example, let's say if I'm on Google Chrome and I have a YouTube video playing. 
and I'm going to make it full screen. And then let's say if I press on the home button. So now you guys see I have the uh, video still playing in the corner. And I can do whatever I want in the background. Press on once to expand. And press again to make it full screen. And if you want to dismiss it, just press, uh, drag it over here to the bottom. And now we go back into Chrome and you guys see it's still playing here. Now if you have YouTube Red, you can use the YouTube app rather than having to use Chrome for it. Uh, also it works for other things like Google Maps, but it's not really that much support. I think for a lot of people just using split screen is a bit more efficient. The quick settings are also slightly different in terms of UI, but it's still pretty similar. Not a huge difference here for the uh, design for it. Now, aside from that, you have autofill, you have smart text. So for smart text, just for example, if someone sends you an address, then you can hold down it and you can access it for Google Maps. And for autofill, as long as you're signed into your Google account on the phone and you have your address in there, things like that, then you should be able to use it across a lot of different apps, a lot of different websites. Uh, so for example, if a website asks for your address and you already have it on your Google account, then you should be able to autofill for that. Now, clearly in terms of new features, not the most exciting update when phones like the XES, the XC1, and the XC Premium all had better updates for Android 8 Oreo. Alright guys, so thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed the video. And again, would definitely like to know your commentary, all your feedback on this update. Uh, did the performance improve? Did the battery life improve? Things like that. So as always, thank you for watching uh, the next video like this, the next Android Oreo update that we do for the Sony phones. Uh, I think it's going to be the Sony Xperia X performance, and we're probably doing a uh, speed test comparison with that versus the XC and the XCS. Alright guys, so thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more, and let me know in the comments what video you want to see next.